one is just like um, probably certain hermeneutic things that are in Heidegger that have something to do with kinds of self-reflection as part of the method of knowing. So that there's this self-reflective part of all inquiry, that you think about the concepts you're using, the even the kinds of answers that you expect based on the concepts that you're using. So that's vital to this sort of hermeneutic phenomenology that he claims to be doing that I think is uh, significant um, there on the idea of like Obviously, for inquiry, in the sense of um, we mostly mean thinking about our research, but I think you can think about it even in your teaching and stuff, and that students should think about this as part of their own learning. Um, there's, uh, but the truth is, like in Heidegger, there's uh, um, a fair bit of like the collected works are his lectures, uh, and many of the lectures themselves. Uh, begin with extended meditations on how he thinks about teaching and learning. He did um, a, a whole course, um, an early course that was on like philosophizing at the university and what that is and its possibilities and constraints and everything. So I think he thought a lot about that stuff. Um, interesting if, you know, um, for better or for worse or anything. So, um, I, you know, it's just an interesting side of Heidegger for me. One of the things there is like, um, that's a problem for weirdly, uh, for thinking about education is, um, uh, so uh, a necessary feature of whatever you mean by education would be some story of change. Like presumably if someone stays exactly the same, uh, then, you know, uh, you hard to say in what sense there's been some education that's happened. So, you know, it's interesting to think about what kinds of change uh, could happen and the model for doing this and like what we mean and the smaller changes. Like, you know, if you share some fact with me that I did not know, then presumably to exactly that level that I am me plus whatever I knew before plus one fact more, then you could say, well, I've changed. But it hardly seems like that uh, counts as something like education. So getting to the sort of larger kind of change that would happen. And there's stuff like this, interestingly, I don't know, well, you know, you know the Plato's cave allegory, but it's interesting. So there, like, it's well known that there's this ascent out of the cave and like that's one metaphorical way of thinking about like uh, conceptualizing change, but you can imagine a very different one uh, that's there, uh, you know, in the text to begin the whole thing that's known as this like periagoge, this turning around of the person. So like a kind of conversion and what that looks like. Um, uh, so uh, I think together those two things are both like how it's um, uh, different aspects about why education matters to Heidegger, how he came to talk about it even though it's not central to what he does in say the um, uh, uh, non-lecture course material that we have of his, it comes up also in some of those places and it's interesting to see how he theorized it and why it might be important there um, and, it's, and vital to how he thinks about philosophy. That was one driving thing. The other driving thing is of course then all the other stuff as a teacher that he himself thought about and talked about in this regard. And so probably at some level like it makes some difference to me to think about like, you know, what's the possibility of being with uh, a group of, you know, students and like who are coming for all these different reasons with all these different motivations and like what uh, uh, effect you can have on them and what you would like to have as some effect on them and, um, you know, uh, at the best possibilities of, of this meeting of us over 12 weeks, like what will what will be the outcome of all that for them? And, uh, yeah, so I try to, that I think about a lot, but.